I have got 10 days until the Women's Prize winner is announced and I still haven't read two of the books on the shortlist. So I need to fix that. To recap, the Women's Prize is one of Booktube's favourite prizes that is awarded every year and the shortlist contains six amazing books by female authors. I had previously, when the long list had been announced, tried to read as many books as I could from the long list, and if you haven't already seen that video, I'll link to it below so you can catch up, which means that by the time these six were selected, I'd actually already made some pretty good progress. I had read Great Circle by Maggie Shipstead, one of my favourite books of the year so far, which is about a female pilot who tried to fly around the world and who famously had gone missing before she completed it. That's in the past, and then we also get a present day storyline with the actress who is playing her in the movie. Absolutely incredible book. I had also read Sorrow and Bliss by Meg Mason, another of my favourite books of the year. This is about a woman who has lived her whole life up until this point with a mental illness that so far has never been diagnosed and it's about the many, many ways that this has affected her. It's also about the breakdown of her marriage, it's about her relationship with her sister, it's about her relationship with the concept of motherhood. It's a really, really moving book that is also laugh out loud hilarious. Both of those were five star reads. I'd also read The Island of Missing Trees by Elif Shafak, which was also gorgeous. This one was, for me, a four-star read. Again, we have a dual timeline. In present day, there was a girl called Ada uh, living in London, whose parents are from Cyprus, um, but they, one of them is Turkish, one of them is Greek, and so they're from different sides of the divide in Cyprus. And we go back in time, we learn their story about their forbidden love and living in Cyprus in a time of war um, and it's a really beautiful book about nature particularly. And finally I had attempted to read the book of Form and Emptiness by Ruth Ozeki but had DNF'd it almost halfway through, I just wasn't getting on with it which is such a shame. This one is about I found it really hard to figure out what this one was about. <laughs> I still don't know. It was about a teenage boy and there's a talking ferret at some point in the book and the book is partly narrated by the book and partly by this boy, Benny, um, kind of arguing back with the book. It's a very interesting concept. It hadn't worked for me, so I DNF'd this one. So that brings me up to the clip we're about to return to, where I had two books left, The Sentence by Louise Erdrich and The Bread the Devil Need by Lisa Allen Agostini. You'll see in the next clip me not knowing how to pronounce the title, but I now, having seen the author talk about it, know that it is The Bread the Devil Need. So that brings us up to date. 10 days to go until the Women's Prize and I had two books left to read. Two books in 10 days, that should be a walk in the park in the old days, that would have been easy. These days I never seem to bloody read anything, so I'm gonna have to really try. I'm gonna start with this nice short one. I don't know how to pronounce this title. Do we think it's The Bread the Devil Ned? The Bread the Devil Need? I have no idea. It's by Lisa Allen Agostini. I think it's gonna be funny. I'm gonna start it now. I said I thought this was gonna be funny based on the fact that the author is a stand-up comedian, but I just properly read the description. I don't think this is gonna be funny at all. It's been described as heart-wrenching. The book is very hard to read so far, so it is not what I thought it was gonna be. I don't know why I thought it was gonna be a funny book. Obviously I had not read the description. Uh, so the book is about domestic abuse, so it is pretty grim. Um, it's very readable. It's not hard to read in that sense. It's just about very dark subject. I'm nearly finished and this book is just so desperately sad. It's like just horrible. I don't think I'm enjoying it. <laughs> it's a good book. It's a really well written book. It's just, oh god, nothing nice has happened. Okay, finished. God, this was a miserable bloody thing. It ended really well. I did like the ending. Um, and I do think it was a really good book. I've got no idea how to rate this one because just because I found it really draining to read doesn't mean that I'm not glad I read it and then it wasn't really good. It's definitely not my favourite of the list. And I'm glad that it's over and time for me to read this sentence, which is, I don't know where it is, where I've left it, but it's chunky. And you know what, actually it's not too bad. The writing's pretty big. So far, I do not know what to make of this book. I'm enjoying it, but it's so strange. So the very first scene, our main character is on drugs. And so in that scene, the way that she is talking is like deliberately strange. So I thought the book is really funny. Um, I can understand why it's strange. I can't wait to see what happens next. But then from then on, she hasn't been on drugs anymore and it's still just as weird. So I really cannot make sense of this. But it's not so I'm not enjoying it. I just haven't like been hooked in yet because I haven't quite understood anyone yet. But basically, it's about a haunted bookshop. Uh, there is a ghost in this. So our main character um, is Native American. 
and she works at a bookshop that is being haunted by the ghost of a customer who's just died. There's this really annoying customer who claimed like Native American heritage that she clearly didn't have. That's essentially what I'm understanding so far. I don't know where that's going to go. I know from what I've read about the book that it is based in 2020 and so we are going to cover a lot of things that happened in 2020, um, but all with quite like a funny writing style. So I'm intrigued, I'm enjoying it, but it is really weird the way that it's written so far. Still literally no idea what's going on, but I'm enjoying reading it in the sun. So I'm just over halfway through the book and I've now got to the point where we reach COVID, which I knew was going to happen, I knew it was going to become very topical, um, and I think more like recent political events are going to happen in it as well. I'm still just like lost on this one, um, but I am enjoying it. I just read a review this morning that said the second half gets more chaotic. So how can it get more chaotic? So we'll see. I'm in a race against time to finish the final book, the sentence. I'm actually really nearly finished, but it is now the night before the prize announcement. And tonight, Raph and I are going to watch the readings. So all of the women who are shortlisted are going to read out bits of their book. And I wanted to finish everything before then. So I've got one train journey in between now and then. Let's see if I can finish it. Okay, I'm here at the readings and I did not manage to finish the book. I was going to read it on the train, as I said, but as I got on the train, I realised I'd spilt something, food, something, all down myself. So Raph and I spent the entire train journey trying to remove that with a stain removing pen. Then at lunchtime I thought I'll listen to the audiobook while I go. I had some errands to run, I thought I'd listen to the audiobook. And again, I spent the whole time just skipping back and forth trying to find my place in the audiobook. So. I'm literally no fan, but it doesn't matter because I'm here and it's so pretty. Okay, I'm back from the readings. I'm in my third outfit of the day because look what I got, a Daphne du Maurier top. They had these in various different authors' names. That was such a fun evening. And even though I still haven't finished the sentence, obviously, I feel like from that I am ready to make my predictions. I still am going to try and finish the sentence this evening. I'm gonna curl up with my glass of wine and try and finish it. So the evening that I just went to, we had readings from all six of the books on the shortlist. Five out of six of them were there live on stage. Louise Erdrich, who is the author of the sentence that I'm reading now, couldn't make it over, um, but instead there was a video of an actor reading out an extract. And I loved that experience. I've never... I sometimes find readings from books when it's just like a little section out of context, I find that quite hard to engage with. But actually, having read them all, so I knew the context, it was a totally different experience. Um, and having, the authors were so good at delivering them, especially Meg Mason, author of Sorrow and Bliss. She was so funny. So I feel like even if I hadn't read that book, I would have just fallen in love with that extract that she read. So, what do I think? My prediction already, even before tonight, was that Sorrow and Bliss was going to win, just because so many people love it. I think it's so, it's very, very accessible, um, and I, so, like, a lot of people it's going to appeal to. And it's also brilliant and heartbreaking and hilarious and everything. So that was my prediction. And having just seen Meg Mason read out an extract, that just, like, doubled down on it. So I think that is my official prediction, is that she is going to win. What's your prediction? So Raph is betting that the bread the devil need is going to win. I think that's a great guess. She was brilliant. So as you saw from this video, I didn't love that book. Um, not because I didn't think it was brilliant, but because it was just so miserable to read. Um, but seeing her read it, because it's written in um, Trinidadian Creole, and hearing her read it was just amazing and totally different from the way that I could read it in my head. So yeah, I think that's a good guess as well. Annoyingly, the only book from the whole list that I genuinely didn't like, just didn't get on with, and the one that I DNF'd was the Ruth Azaki, the, uh, what's it called, The Book of Form and Emptiness. And it's such a shame because she was so lovely. The author was just like the friendliest, nicest person. She was so smiley. You could see her being so supportive of all the other authors. I so wanted to love her. And I liked the way she talked about her writing process. It was really interesting what she was trying to do with the book. It just didn't do anything for me. And even hearing her read out an extract, it was just lacking 
a bit of personality for me, which is a really weird thing to say about a book that's very quirky and unusual. It's partly narrated by a book. It's got like the book and the main character sort of arguing with each other. Like it sounds like that should be jam packed full of personality, but it just didn't quite connect with me. I'm actually not gonna be home tomorrow when the prize gets announced. I'm gonna be out at a Mamma Mia party. So I will have to check in with you when I get home or the morning after uh, when I see who the winner is going to be. I would love it. My favourite of all of them is still, personally, Great Circle by Maggie Shipstead. That's my favourite one. I don't think it's going to win. I think it's going to be Sorrow and Bliss, which was also a five-star read. Those are my two five stars, so I'd be happy with either of those. I'll see you when we know the answer. The prize has been announced. I haven't seen it yet. I've been at a Mamma Mia party all night with Emma, who was holding the camera, so I haven't seen. I have finished the book. I finished the book on the tube here. Emma sat next to me while I finished the last few pages of the sentence, which I hadn't finished. So I've officially read everything. You already know my predictions because I told them to you yesterday. Please hold while I Google. <laughs> How do I find the winner? No! No! Don't! No! <laughs> the winner is the only one I didn't read. Wow, I mean, good for Ruth Azaki. She wrote the book of form and emptiness. I thought it was really boring. She seemed lovely. Damn it! Good job! I read all of them! I've never done that before. Ever, ever in my whole life, I read all of them, and this is the one that I didn't finish. And it won. <laughs> the irony that <laughs> of all the books I read. I read five and a half books for the Women's Prize shortlist and I also had read an extra two books from the long list which I adored. The books I had read that didn't make it onto the shortlist were um, The Paper Palace which was a five star read, one of my favourites of the year, The Exhibitionist by Charlotte Mendelssohn, another fantastic book, both of those were incredible. Of this stack here I've got two five star reads, a four star read two three star reads all of which i thought were really really good even the ones i gave three stars it's just about my personal enjoyment i still thought they were so interesting i'm really glad i read them and the only one that i just couldn't get on with <laughs> won the women's prize what does that say about me i'm an idiot i've spoken to quite a few people who say this is their favorite book of the list so i think it's just Maybe a Marmite book, you either love this style or you don't, and I didn't get on with it. But like, massive congratulations to Ruth Izeki, who, as I said earlier in this video, was just the loveliest person. So I'm so happy for her that she won. And I'm just baffled at why I wasn't able to get on with this book. Let me know in the comments below if you have read it, uh, and if you, what you thought of it. Do you think I should try it again? I was at one point considering picking it up and trying again, but maybe life is too short. Maybe I just have to accept. I'm not women's prize judge material. This was the first year that I read all of the books in the women's prize and I loved it so much. So I'm now fully committed. I'm gonna try and do this every single year. Let me know which of these you read and what your favorites were and I'll see you soon.